today I just really want to talk about what I always talk about. <laughs> I feel like either Ascension or Galactic Family or some combination of both because it's all connected. And I've really just titled this Galactic Family Connection. If you guys were at the last, um, the last Ultimate Star Beings conference, some of this will be familiar to you. And if you weren't, this is sort of for you. This is so I can kind of start at the beginning, not the very beginning from, from that presentation. But I just want to invite you along a journey into our hearts to really look at our connection with our galactic family. And the first thing I would love to talk about briefly is we have cosmic time and we have linear time. Most of the rest of existence is on something called we call cosmic time. And a lot of 3D expressions, third dimensional expressions, um, experience linear time, but not all of them, which I find quite fascinating. And you can think of cosmic time like a spiral, right? Um, it is this enormous spiral. It's all about soul expression or source expression. And then linear time is more focused on life progression. And as we are here on earth, I mean, we obviously know that we experience ourselves in linear time, but we are also moving into more of a cosmic time. And those of us that are experiencing ourselves resonating at within our higher dimensional frequencies, we will experience that overlap of cosmic time and linear time. And time can get a little wobbly, right? So I also want to touch on, and I know, Neil, this was one of your favorite, <laughs> favorite ones from last year. Um, I want to touch on dimensional expressions. All of these things are so important to understand who we are, at the core essence of our being and how our soul expresses within all of the, the realities, the variety of realities, whether they're consensus or like we have here or other, you know, many, many other options. So I like to think of dimensions of, of everything in dimensions. My team talks about density and I know our density and dimensional numbers don't align on earth, which I'm not sure why. Um, so this is the way I sort of make sense of it in my mind as I'm communicating with a variety of different beings. So as you can see on the right, when we're in the third, fourth and fifth dimensions, we technically hold less less light. Now, I want to say that as of when we are still slumbering, playing in our illusions of separation and forgetting, right? We still have the same amount of light available to us at all times. But we also experience ourselves with individuated consciousness, very individuated, and a lot more density. When we're looking at I, sixth, seventh, and eighth dimension, I call that the cosmic, those, those the cosmic dimensions, um, cosmic beings, you'll hear me say that, you'll hear, you'll hear me say that a lot, um, if you ever hear me speak publicly, um, and with that, that's where we step in, and we technically step into that within the fifth dimension as well, we step into unity consciousness, and a very neutral love, and above density, and then when we're looking at ninth all the way up, and sometimes ninth and fifth are sort of overlapped as they all are because you're, we're technically interwoven with all of this, we're looking at more light, expansive con consciousness and less density. A lot of the beings in nine, 10, 11, 12 and up, those beings express without physical form. Now, the interesting thing about these beings is that they can create form, they can create worlds, they can create life, they can do all of these things that we would consider to be very godlike um, here on earth. And what, now what I would love to really remind everyone of is that we are all of these. As a human, being an infinite creator being, expressing an aspect of consciousness in a third, fourth fifth dimensional form, which is what we've sort of run into, we have access to 
versions of ourself, of this person, of you, of Sherry, of uh, Marcus, of I don't remember who else is here, but I could say your names, of all of those people who are, there are versions of you in each of these. This is something when you start to expand your consciousness and do a lot of meditation and access your deep soul memory, you will start to access other aspects of you not i'm not i'm not even talking about simultaneous lives and i'm not talking about parallel lives meaning carbon copies of us experiencing our life in a different way on a variety of earths right i'm not talking about the copies and i'm not talking about other beings that our soul is expressing as i'm literally speaking about you as a person our consciousness is all of these things and we have elements of us of our soul within this expression that are also experiencing ourselves in all of these different dimensional expressions that can get kind of confusing but for those of you that are experiencing yourself um being received by others during dream time and assisting other people in their dreams that can also be your there's the teams the soul teams doing that but when you're experiencing yourself doing that in astrals, right? Fourth dimensional expression, sometimes fifth. Um, when you experience yourself having council meetings with a multitude of councils of light, which is what I now call the beings that I work with um, because they requested that. Um, so all of these different things are you. This, this memory, this knowingness, this access of of something happening in real time at the same time as your everyday waking reality here now in this now moment. That is a version of you that is multitasking, so to speak. That's your multidimensionality where you're getting a glimpse into the variety that is actually contained within the human experience on earth. Um, so I wanted to bring that in because it's something that I've, I've heard lots of people expressing. I myself am experiencing I'm sometimes 12 different council meetings happening simultaneously. Those of you that are part of the councils of light that um, have, have connection and communication with them. A lot of people call them the Galactic Federation of Light. They've been, my Nahara is a Pleiadian counterpart that I have. She's a parallel life, or I mean, I'm sorry, a simultaneous life. And she and a bunch of them came forward and said, no more Galactic Federation of Light, please. We would like to be called either Galactic Councils of Light or Councils of Light. Um, and that's a whole other story. It'd probably be a whole presentation, <laughs> a micro presentation as to why. But um, if you hear me say Councils of Light, that's that's who I'm speaking to and, and of. And there are many, we have so many different councils. So moving forward, um, we, we all share a soul stream. So this is moving into, out of our own personal multidimensional experience as, and I don't like to speak of my myself in the third person, but as Bridget, right? Um, or Sherry or Marcus or Natalie or whoever, whoever you are, right? Um, we also share a soul stream with all of the other lives and expressions of our soul. All of those beings who are either in physicality, some form of physical expression, some form of cosmic expression, an ethereal expression, even collective consciousness that has no density whatsoever. There are so many beings and non-beings that our soul is expressing as and within our soul families as well. So not only are we connected with the parallel aspects of us as our human form that we're focused in now, we're also connected with all of the variety of forms and expressions that are beyond the earth experience, right? And with that, we exist in all the dimensions. You guys heard me talk about that. But our soul, you know, it has this beautiful effect. If you look at the streamers and the light, imagine that the, the light running up this picture is a soul column. And all of the different streaming light that's coming off go to all these variety of lives and expressions. 
they are all connected. And as you saw in the sacred geometry, um, when I was talking about the cosmic time and linear time, we create this beautiful tapestry of creation. And when we reach a particular degree of consciousness expansion within our own multidimensional remembrance, we can openly communicate with our simultaneous lives via our natural consciousness communication abilities. Many of the beings on your soul team, who are those beautiful beings that are here to guide and assist you along your journey, they are you in what we would call past, present, and future lives. As you can see, I've got these beautiful Lyran, like feline Lyran, like beings on here. And I know there's so, I can feel so many people that are here and that will be watching this hold Lyran frequencies. But that's what we mean when we say, I'm a Lyran starseed, I'm an Andromedan starseed. I call it holding frequencies of them. Our DNA is amazing. If you guys want more information on DNA, definitely check out Geraldine Orozco if you haven't already. Um, but there's so much, we are truly a hybridized species. And the word alien has been thrown around so much lately. But I just want to remind us that we are two. We are a galactic race. We are a galactic species who doesn't know that we are. And it's just coming back into the memory of that. And there's this deep connection between all of the different races and species, whether we are conscious of it or not, or whether they are conscious of it or not. So everyone is connected in the oneness field. We've got Andromedans, Arcturians, Sistani, Syrians, all the beautiful insectoids. We've got us here on Earth, the Lyrans, the Saroid races, which are uh, reptilians, Anunnaki, Pleiadian, Yael, Auroras, and so many more that we can barely, uh, we're barely scratching the surface of who's out there. So I want to remind us all that we have a lot of rabbit holes and theories and different opinions and judgments about a lot of the races that we feel are playing roles within the control constructs with humanity. And I just want to take, and I'll spend some more time on this later, I want to take a moment to remind you that within those races that are playing roles in the control constructs with us here on earth and other beings, there are also species and races within those types of beings that do not hold that sort of expression. So while we might think of the Anunnaki, a lot of people based on Sitchin's work and others that have come since then, we might think of them, some people, especially if you've, if you've been receiving a lot of information about this from other humans, you might say, oh, they created us as a slave race and all of these different things. And you might just discount them as no thank you. I personally come into all of this connection with, I will communicate with the beings that I am in alignment with. Um, it's about my inner expression being reflected back to me. And I communicate with Anunnaki ethereal beings who are beautiful. They are so full of love. They are so supportive. They understand themselves in oneness and unity. And they are not even remotely related to those, those um, now. They're not energetically frequency related to those stories um, that we are telling. And, and they have lots of information <laughs> that they share about that. But it's the same for reptilians. So my team has always said that there is there are groups of people um, that are playing in the control constructs with humanity. I call everyone people, just FYI. And that there are many others that do not. And I have personal experiences with beautiful, supportive, love light reptilian people. And there are many different races of reptilians. So I just want to use this and the same with insectoid. Um, I just want to use this slide and that opportunity to remind us that we are all connected by soul and source, even those who have forgotten. 
and that we are a soul family tree. And it is time for humanity and the rest of the universe through what we're calling the ascension here on earth, we're calling it that, it's time for us to bring all of our parts back into harmony and really understand that there are aspects of consciousness existing in every dimension, playing whatever source expression they that our soul has decided for us to play. So just as here in humanity, we have both light and dark within us, there are others that do too, but the entire universe is being called and upgraded and activated and brought into whatever the next version is for us. And so I just invite everyone to remember that, that we have diversity in unity. And I'm just going to show you some pictures. I do a lot of consciousness traveling. And in my consciousness traveling experiences, I have seen all kinds of beings and I've literally spent so many hours at night in preparation for this generating art that looks like some of the beings that I have seen. But I'm doing this not just to show you pretty art. I'm doing this for you to look at each of these beings and look at the things that are similar to us, but also look at the nuanced differences in appearance. And my invitation with, with showing you these different beings is for you to, if you, if you find yourself contracting or repelling from any of the aspects of them, my invitation is for you to find the beauty in those moments. Because when we can find the beauty in anything in existence, when we can find something that we can see that is unusual and not think of it as repelling within its otherness when we can bring it into that unity consciousness that we all hold within us then we're able to literally find our connection and and find it within us and feel it with other beings so my my soul team collective talks a lot and and it's something that i'm very passionate about and um, they talk a lot about humans and how we have some things to understand about ourselves if if we are to have open and aligned contact with our galactic family and one of the things i'm just going to speak as you're looking at these and kind of doing your your open-hearted um connection one of the things that we are going to be in for a number of years from what they've shown me is healing our trauma, pain, and suffering. And I just want to say that everything in our reality is colored by these things. So if we perceive life, we perceive it through all that we're carrying within our consciousness. And if we desire to understand and connect with our galactic, cosmic, and ethereal families, we want to be clear of everything we've adopted and created that no longer serves us. And the information we receive when we do that is, well, before we do that, is angled in those directions. So all information that we receive through other beings, which are us, we've just, you know, kind of established that earlier. Um, and through, even through channeling and even through, um, sometimes through our high self, which is interesting. The information we receive is always angled in those directions. So if we're holding trauma and if we're, we're viewing the world through the lens of judgment, through our stories of suffering and pain, that all that information flows through those filters and then it's distorted by them. So my encouragement is to really do the deep dives and um, start to really look at all of the areas of your consciousness. And if you are not sure where to start, you can ask your high self, you can ask your soul team collective, they're in oneness. You can say, please bring to the light of my awareness all that is ready to be released and set down. And please do so in a gentle way. Bring it into my mind 
and offer me deep understanding. And then it's our, all we have to do is drop in with it when it comes up, when the memory arise, arise, um, arises, when someone triggers, someone's action triggers some a deep emotion within us or, um, you know, whatever it may look like for you in that moment. And if you're not sure what to do in that moment, put your attention and focus on your heart and ask your high self, what will you have me do with this? How can I heal this, release this, transmute it, move beyond it? How can I bring this back into wholeness? And sometimes it's just the light of our awareness. And I just want to give you an example of this for me. Um, I, in my early days, <laughs> um, I've been communicating my whole life for those of you that, that have just now met me. But in my late teens, early 20s, I was still holding a lot of trauma, a lot of trauma from some early, early trauma, but also things that had happened um, throughout my life leading to that moment. And I was very expanded. I was super open. And we happened to have another kickstart of what we're labeling the ascension during that time period. And so it really just turned everything up. Like the volume was up so high on all of my soul senses, which is what I call the clairs and psychic ability and all of that. And I started getting my, my request. Let me just say this. My request my whole life, my one thing has been wisdom. My if if wisdom and love if and and unity. But when I was younger, I was always asking for wisdom. I wanted to access my wisdom, the wisdom of my soul, the wisdom, just period, right? And so I started getting lots of visions and downloads and different things like that. And during that time period, it was, I mean, it was on full speed. It was sometimes an entire day would just be filled with that. And um I started getting lots of visions and downloads that were filled with suffering and filled with pain and filled with all of these really dark visuals. And if you're one of these people that is experiencing that right now, I invite you to really tap into your heart and listen to my words. And with all of this, I mean, I would just sob and sob and sob because it was so much and I could feel it all as well as the visual. And there was one in particular that started my shift out of it. And I literally called it um, viewing the pain and suffering and of the world. And it was this, you know, few milliseconds by milliseconds of live in time things that were happening from all around the, all around the earth, all different parts of the earth with people, animals, our habitat, all of these different things. And it was all of these terrible things, right? From clear cutting force to, you know, murder, all of these. I mean, I don't want to trigger anyone, but all of these really intense things. And it was just one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. And it went on for what felt like an eternity. It was probably about 15 minutes, but it just continued to go and go and go. And finally, I just screamed with my soul, stop. And I was, I mean, I was, I was a puddle. I was sobbing so intensely that my body was tremoring and I, I was wailing. And one of my best friends, we were very telepath, telepathically connected. Um, we lived in the same apartment. She felt me and she came running and let herself in my house and came all the way back through like three doors to get to my bedroom and just held me. And I could not speak for I don't know how long it was a long time. I was all I could do was sob. And um, what it showed me, I got it, I got a little emotional thinking about that. So if you are tapping into this stuff, what it showed me was how much work we had to do here on the planet within ourselves. But it also made me ask why why am i suddenly getting these very intense dense visions and messages and i was getting lots of messages about things like that as well and what my soul team said is this is where you're focused and i was like what i'm not focused in this way and they were like yes within your consciousness this 
is where you're focused. You are a frequency match for these visions, for these downloads, for this information. If you don't want to be in alignment with them, do some healing. And I was like, really mad at them first because that was my personality back then. I was like, how dare you? <laughs> you know? I was very sassy. But at the same time, I was like, okay, once I got over being mad and being told that I'm the creation of all of this, right? Um, or that it came through me and I had something to do with its reflection to me. Um, I started doing healing and I started working tipping away at the, tra the trauma, peeling away the proverbi proverbial onion layers one at a time. And I have done that for a very long time. Um, and what I started to observe within my reality is that the information started to shift. And I had put a pause on some of the visions while I was doing some really deep work on some, on some, elements of trauma within my my history that I knew were denser in my consciousness. And then when I opened back up for visions, I could see the progression of how much light I was starting to hold. I could feel it in myself. And I've come in with a very 5D blueprint. Um, 5D and above as always, but um, I could feel my light quotient increasing. I could see the information and, and really understand the information that I was accessing was being accessed through different angles. And really, it changed my life in so many ways. The information I started accessing, the I ask a lot of questions, but even within my soul knowingness, our high knowingness is what I like to call it. And um, that information started to shift when I shifted out of what I call my third, fourth dimensional consciousness, um, bringing it into the wholeness, of course. But when I began to really expand into and out of the things that I had adopted and created that were no longer serving me, and the things that I allowed within my reality, the experiences that I had had that were traumatic, I allowed myself to carry them around like they were a badge of trauma honor, right? Um, and some of them I didn't carry in that way, but to use those very, I know those words are very intense, but I had adopted a lot of my trauma into my persona, into who I was. And through clearing that out, I got to see and experience more of who I am at the core essence of my beingness. And that's what I'm inviting everyone to do is step out of the trauma identity and step into your heart and soul core essence. Because when we're channeling information, when we are accessing our own soul knowingness, our, our current degree of consciousness expansion directly affects our current consciousness focal points, right? So if we're getting information from our soul team, from our high self, from the Akashic records, from, you know, wherever it is that we're, we're accessing information through our high knowingness, and we want information that can uplift and serve ourselves, but also uplift and serve our beautiful collective, as well as the rest of the universe, being a clear channel of that information is so important, right? So, um, and this is important because when we are receiving this information, our consciousness expands. And because we're in that unity, then the consciousness of other people receive that information as well, whether we speak about it or not, right? So it's it's literally rippling out from us energetically. Um, that's why I, that's why our our private community is called Ascension Catalysts because we're all Ascension Catalysts. But if we're here to remember who we are at the core essence of our being as we live this amazing human life. And we have a deep desire of connecting with our galactic, cosmic, and ethereal families. It's important to understand 
how this clear, this clarity of perspective will impact not only our interaction with one another, but also our interaction with our galactic, cosmic, and ethereal families. And if we are still holding a lot of separation consciousness and we are still seeing ourselves as other than, we're still seeing one another as other than, we're still judging people based on our appearances, we're judging um, people based on different ethnicities, there's only one race of humans on the planet, just FYI. Um, but if we're if we're spending a lot of our time on this, then we're holding ourselves in that separation consciousness, that suffering, that pain, and we're we're looking at the world and everything everything in existence through muddy muddy glasses. So my invitation is to find the thing within other beings, whether they be galactic, cosmic, ethereal, something terrestrial, insects, you guys probably heard if you were at the last, um, how to, how to, what was it, how to prepare for contact with extraterrestrial beings. If you were at that when you heard me talk about this too, find things that you find repelling, look at them, really work through that. A lot of the beings that the avatar that your fear, your you have a fear of the spider. There's a reason for that. And it's not necessarily from this, this world, but really just look at them, spend time with your own self, bringing everything into wholeness, spend time bringing all of the things that you say are other than into wholeness in whatever way feels aligned for you. And watch how your life will begin to reflect that. Um, your life, your external reality will begin to reflect that unity back to you, that love, the ability to perceive things that are highly different than us in a way that you feel connected to them. This is something that is natural for us and we've been programmed to be other than that. We don't come into the world with, um, with a lot of that separation con consciousness. So, we come into the world from who we have been as a soul and we know that connection. Just look at tiny little babies and children together and it'll explain it to you fully.